I get some people don't. I like to keep it off. Uh, if you're hooked up through Frugal or Google Base, you would check that module and then enter that information. Gift certificates, on or off. If you have Google Analytics, the system automatically built in with support of Google Analytics. You would just insert your Google ID inside of the general settings under Google Analytics. The system all supports Google Checkout. With Google Checkout, basically uh, you will use Google Checkout as a payment method and people will be able to check out using that method. You can also have the option to greet the visitor. So using cookies, when they return to your site, it'll greet them with, hello, whatever your name is, welcome back. Kind of a nice little feature if, you, if it works within your design. The HTML editor, which again, currently only works with Internet Explorer and Firefox. Uh, Safari is not supported at this time. Image verification, which is the CAPTCHA. We like to keep that turned on for certain areas. Uh, we're not going to worry about Anurka. And then maintenance agent. Well, we want to turn that on only because it lets us know where our store is at periodically, like how many orders we've had, if anything's gone awry. We want to keep that turned on. News management. Well, those are our newsletters. We're going to keep that checked. Order tracking. This allows us to track orders from USPS, UPS, and FedEx services. Very nice. That's actually a handy feature. And then we have product options which uh, gives us product options. So say we have a t-shirt that we want to say we want it available in multicolors or multiple sizes and some of those uh, sizes are different prices. We can assign different SKUs, images, and quantities for each one of those. So that's product options. QuickBooks, this allows you to export your data into a QBF, whatever QuickBooks is. Uh, recommended products, this will auto generate a list based on your products to help drive additional uh, traffic to other products that aren't getting a lot of say. Shipping label generator. This will allow you to create a shipping label, just a simple shipping label using uh, the orders panel. SNS, this is for an external module called Sales and Stats, which is a handy module. Say you want to offer live chat on your site or live support, you would use that. Uh, subscriptions, if you have a subscription based website, that would be enabled. UPS online tools. Xcart is fortunate enough to have UPS Online automatically integrated into the system. So you turn that on and that enables that. And UPS is a snap to set up and work. Uh, users Online, if you want to show that, and I skipped over upselling products, which basically recommends a uh, list uh, of stuff when they buy something. So it's kind of nice. And then Wholesale Trading, if you have wholesale prices, can be defined. And then for those users that are logged in as wholesale, they will only see the wholesale price. They won't see the retail price. And then again, do you have your wish list turned on and off? And if you turn this off, the menu over here will disappear. So we're going to go ahead and update that. And then moving on. So next we have payment methods. Now this is where we determine how we're getting paid because we're selling stuff online and we want to make sure that we take everything. So we have our phone ordering. Fax ordering, don't necessarily need, don't need money order, don't need purchase order. We do accept checks, so we can go ahead and leave that checked. Gift certificate, we have that set up, so we can say pay with your gift certificate. And then our credit card. Now, this credit card is for offline processing. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means it's not going to get charged. It's going to collect the information, and also I noticed right here, it's not secure. And you want to make sure if you're accepting credit cards, your website is secure. So HTTPS, that means secure. And unfortunately, we're not going to do this. We're going to set up authorize.net. So what we're going to do is go down here to Payment Gateway and select authorize.net AIM, which stands for Advanced Integration Method. Now, let's see here. So I didn't get to save that, so it kept those all checked. But down here authorize.net and all we got to do to configure is we go to the authorize.net website enter our login and password for when we sign up for authorize.net and get the information from the settings page for the API login ID transaction ID and then we have our currency which is going to be set to US dollar let's go ahead and scan through all these different money types and let's see we have United dollar boom and then our MD5 hash value, make sure that's entered correctly. So we can put that to live and then our order prefix. So if my website's uh, mops and things, you know, 
M A T mops and things. And for this, we're going to auth and capture, or you have the option of authorize only. If you want to capture the uh, payment but not charge it, say you want to add shipping later, or you want to, you know, talk to the client and make sure that they ordered everything okay. And if you get a lot of fraudulent orders, you want to maybe set the authorize only, and then click update. So that's pretty much payment methods. Next is patch and upgrade. Now this area is typically only used if there's an upgrade for Xcart or if there's a patch and should only be used by a, a trained professional. So we'll go ahead and leave that area alone. Next is the HTML catalog. Now what the HTML catalog does is it generates a HTML only version of your website. Your website being programmed in PHP, but now with the new SEO features of Xcart, you really don't need HTML catalog but if you want to maximize your SEO experience, you can go ahead and click Generate Catalog. It'll then go through and generate all of the pages for that. So we're going to go ahead and stop that and go to the next page, which is Static Pages. Now, here are the static pages for the site. We have the default ones, which are About, FAQ, Terms, Privacy, and Publicity, or Press. And then whether or not we want to show the link in the Help page, if you have that feature turned on and if the page is active and you can even click the preview link to view that page all you gotta do is if you want to modify the way they're displayed in the help page you can modify that or don't worry about it again we talked about the you know the smarty tags if that's checked leave it checked to modify a page click on the link you can modify the page name and all the content if you have a what you see is what you get editor you can modify all of your website page right there no problems. And you also have spaces for a keyword and description, which is new in this version. And that's how you modify your page. It's pretty simple. And you can modify any of your uh, website pages from there. Most of your custom stuff, obviously, it's in a separate area where you can customize. It's a little bit easier to use. But again, customizations, they cost a little bit of money. So next option down is speed bar. Now, if you have this feature active, it'll show a little bar at the top. Let me show you what that looks like. Home, shopping cart, contact us. There's our speed bar. So we can go ahead and add stuff to that and it'll show up right there. Or we can turn that off and not use that feature if we have a custom navigation. I hope uh, this has been informative and if you have any questions, please let us know and we will uh, update this tutorial. Other than that, thank you for joining us and we look forward to helping you out with the next tutorial.